Hello everyone, my name is Abhishekta and welcome to Univorge. Today we're going to discuss one of the most important topics that is analysis of mocks. I think by now any serious aspirant knows how important mocks are because mocks not only gives you good practice but also it will give you an actual exam feel. You get to evaluate your performance, analyze your weak points and there is proper time management and then there is strategy building. You can try different strategies for different mocks and then you know fix with one type of strategy for your examination. If you want to know the detailed explanation of uh, how to make an excel sheet for a mock then do watch Vedika Manik's video which will be provided in the description box down below the link and she explained A to Z everything about mocks and excel sheets everything related to that. So when you analyze your mock you avoid repeating mistakes and then you'll understand where you went wrong, where did you spend more time than required or on which questions you should have invested more time or with which questions you should have started. So basically it helps you to maximize your strengths and minimize your weakness. What should you do? Step one, sit for the mock. Seriously, the first problem majority of students create for themselves is the fact that they do not give this test. There is always this temptation to start next week, even I faced it, but seriously get rid of this next week syndrome. And you'll always you'll always think you haven't prepared that much, you know, enough to give a mock, but it's okay. There is no harm in starting with mocks, even if your syllabus is not complete. Step two, check your scores. This one is less common, but still this issue exists. Some students simply fail to look up their scores and thus the analysis goes down the drain. And do not, absolutely do not worry about your scores in the start. Just focus on building a good strategy and the one which suits you basically. That's it. Step 3. Analyze your section, area and time-wise performance. Try to figure out your performance in the major areas and also check which question took you the longest amount of time. And also gauge the amount of time you took to solve reading comprehension, which is extremely important. Step four, resolve the exam. Do not, absolutely do not look at the solutions at this stage. Try to solve the exam again. Try to solve the questions without any time pressure and see how it goes. And try to understand how you solve the paper in the first go and how you should have actually solved it. Identify the questions you missed on and try to segregate your silly mistakes. I know this sounds so hard to do, but trust me, if you do it, nothing can stop you from getting a seat. Step 5. Check solutions now. This is the step when you finally look at the solutions. Check the problems you could not solve and also check the ones you could. The latter for the simple reason that there might be a hidden trick or tip that you can use in other exams. And also, if there is any questions you got it uh, right by guessing, then remember that one and then solve it later. Step 6. Maintain a notebook. Make a quick note of all the things you've learned from the exam. And then this should include uh, mathematics shortcuts, data interpretation, tips and techniques, and then some grammar rules and then usage rules. and words that you learn from the exam, everything, everything that you felt like is necessary to note down, everything. Step 7. Extra effort for verbal ability. Try to identify the different passage sources and read further from these. Uh, this should qualify for awesome, awesome reading practice. Please do not neglect verbal section. I have my own batchmates and even me who messed up English even after doing so good in math section. And um, if it was me, uh, I think I would have started with English because I was comparatively weaker at English. So start with uh, that section, particular section which you are weak at. Step eight and the final one, build a strategy. Okay, on basis of your current attempt, drop a strategy for your next exam. Give yourself a series of directives to follow for the next exam and see how it goes. 
So these are the things you should basically do when you analyze a mock. Uh, but according to me, if you give a mock, it's only 40% of your task done. The majority, 60% of the task is analyzing the mock and then understanding your mistakes, learning from your mistakes, and which is extremely crucial for any competitive exam. I hope this video was useful for you in some way and it helped you clarify your doubts. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Um, and please do let me know uh, what other points you think should be added in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.